Good afternoon. Have your attention. We're going to begin our program. Thanks for bearing with us. We know we're starting a little late. We're waiting for um, all of our honorees to get here. So we will begin now. So good afternoon and welcome to the 15th annual Unsung Hero Awards. <laughs> My name is Linda Brooks Burton, and I am the branch manager at the Bayview Wadden branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful library, wonderful branch. And every year, the library likes to take the time to honor those individuals who go above and beyond the duty uh, to volunteer in their neighborhoods, whether in their own families, or at work, or their communities. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we would like to honor these heroes today. To begin our program, we have uh, a choir from Castlemont High School who's going to sing first for us, Lift Every Voice and Sing. They have their own rendition, so please listen. And then after they've sung their version, we'd like uh, everyone to stand and sing Lift Every Voice a second time. So if you would give a wonderful welcome to these young people, the Castleliers from Castlemont High School. Thank you.
Let's give Council Mon Council Cheers one more big hand, one more hand. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is my name is Stuart Shaw. I'm the African American Center Librarian here at the Main Library, and I want to welcome you again to the 15th Annual Unsung Heroes Award. And my job, no no pictures, please. <laughs> I'm here to introduce our MC for the day and our cheerleader for the day, Veronica Dangerfield. Veronica has been MC for this program for the past five or six years, and I can't think of a better person to, to be our MC. She's the mother of three. She's a, a, a loyal li library activist and supporter, and great people, as they say. So, without any more talk from me, I want to introduce Veronica Dangerfield. Thank you. Good morning, cousins. How y'all doing? You know what? I never thought I would be in front of so many beautiful people. Don't you guys look gorgeous today? Yeah, yeah give yourselves a hand. And today we are here, cousins, to lift up each other and to lift up all of the unsung heroes. Now, I know you guys have been keeping some secrets from me. I know that every single one of you is a hero in your own right. So cousins, I don't want you to leave me up here by myself. Say ashe for, ashe for you and ashe for me. And get up and greet your other cousins and say good morning. Don't be shy now. This is a party. This is a celebration. All right, all right. That is the spirit, cousins. That is the spirit. See, that's one thing about when you get a bunch of black folks together and they start partying, you got to break it up. All righty, y'all. I don't know if y'all remember me, but my name is Veronica Dangerfield. I'm Rodney's only black child. I am the proud mo mother of three children, um, and um, the last one I called my very own Terminator. <laughs> yes, I have one in my house now. That's the one that took my memory, because I have none. All the memory that I have, I have to buy it in my computer. <laughs> Ain't I smart? <laughs> so this day, we're going to lift up some amazing people, but I'm not going to lift them up by myself because you, my cousins, are going to hold hands with me, and we're going to celebrate. Now, we're not going to sit there in our desks at our chairs quietly, are we? Because I know you guys can talk, and I know you can say hallelujah, hallelujah. and I shay. And that's right, so we're going to keep it going. And the first honoree tonight, the honorees to, at this Unsung Heroes event are the most phenomenal. And as the young people, we have our very first leader. His name is Renard Mon Monroe. <laughs> Mr. Monroe is, a, is an amazing man. He's a, a husband, a father, and a young leader in the OMI community. He is a coordinator of youth programs, and he has inspired over 100 youths in the OMI. Can I get an amen for motivating those youths? Because you know, some of us are left behind. Renard has brought hope and inspiration, many who will be classified as risk. He's motivated them to strive for academic excellence, as well as acquisition of social and recreational skills. The PRIDE program that he coordinates provides academic tutoring, health, nutrition, education, and recreational activities, as well as an introduction to the community service. He is a young leader, because that's where we're going to get all our leaders from, OK? Because we can't be running the game all by ourselves forever, because I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little tired. But so thank you so much, Renard. Several of the longtime activists in the neighborhood are very proud of this young man's leadership and potential, and feel that he's a new generation of movers and shakers, representing the OMI community as a change agent, and that he will be, you bring young people into the community process by keeping them 
where they belong, they feel loved, they feel honored, and they feel treasured in their own communities. Please give them a warm welcome. Renard Monroe. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to start off by saying that I'm honored to be receiving the Unsung Hero Award. Um, when I think back over my personal and professional life, um, there are so many people who have inspired me, um, a long list who have inspired me and have indirectly and directly taught me the importance of caring about others. Um, my work in the community is so important to who I am and what I want to accomplish, um, you can't understand. Um, the smiles and the hugs from the youth that I work with, or the sat satisfaction of seeing kids like Ebony run up to me and say, Mr. Monroe, Mr. Monroe, I got an A on my test, or I made the honor roll, or I got into the school of my choice. Um, it makes all the work that you do worthwhile. These experiences that I have with the youth that I work with will always keep me warm and make sure that I keep on moving in the community and trying to make a change. I would like to thank the individuals who nominated me for this prestigious award. Uh, without your commitment and support, I would not be able to accomplish my goals for the children and the youth. I would also like to thank my family, uh, my loving wife, Nari my two sons, Brandon and Bryce, um, my sisters, Tracy, Donette, and Brittany, um, my main inspiration, Ms. Dolores Ball, um, who's my grandmother through marriage. Um, she's taught me a lot. She's been an educator in San Francisco for many years, and uh, she doesn't know how much I look up to her. Um, I also like to thank my moms Shirley Monroe, and my mother-in-law, Cheryl Austin. Um, without that support system, it, the things that I do in the community just would not be possible. Um, thank you again, and I will treasure this award for the rest of my life. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our next fabulous awardee, Mrs. Pritchard. She who has the power to open the womb and has done great things for all of us. Holy is her name. Her mercy flows through mother to daughter from generation to generation. Her maternal strength strikes at the root of evil. She pushes the proud from the pinnacles of power and she lifts up little people, big people, old people, young people. She lifts us all up. She feeds her hungry daughter. For those who are filled to the brim with opportunity, she sends away. She soothes all who turns to her, remembering her compassion. She keeps in her promise to her progeny forever. Let me talk about Mrs. Pritchard. She's worked for HERC since 1999 with the asthma program. If many of you live in the Bayview community, all of our children have asthma. Why? Because they set up all kind of industrial er um, plants in our areas and usually they're with the poor people, and so her work is fabulous. She, this lady will not only help out the parents of people with asthma, but if you call her in the middle of the night, guess what? She gets up out of her bed and she comes to you. Let me hear now Shay for that, cousins. Now how many of you will get out of your warm bed to help somebody else? She is a heroine in the community, before she started working at HERC, she was a para-volunteer at Charles Drew Elementary School, and she also vol volunteered at the homeless shelter. She lives in Bayview Hunters Point now, and her goal is she wants the community to grow in better ways and make our people have a better life. And that is the way she lives her life. So lift your hands up, cousin, and give her a proverbial hug. Come on up, Ms. Pritchard.
thank you. I don't have a speech prepared, so this is coming from my heart. Um, wow, this is, God. Um, thank you for this award. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank God. Um, I had an accident recently. I fell down the steps. And um, they wanted me to stay home for a couple of months, but I told my doctor, my children need me, okay? I work with children that have asthma, and I don't know if any of you guys know, but in Baby Hunters Point, we have a lot of children that suffer with asthma. Um, I love my work. I love working with children. I love working with people. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. And I'd really like to thank Vanny Fan and LeConte Dill, who are my two co-workers who nominated me for this award. Um, I want to thank the committee um, and all of you and everybody in the Baby Hunters Point community for all the support. And my two children, Fred and Tiffany. Tiffany came up from Sacramento to be with me today, and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you, everybody. Let's put our hands together to wish her a speedy recovery. Thank you so much for putting out the effort and coming here today. Now, I want to talk to y'all cousins. Hello, are y'all still there? Oh, okay, okay. I'd like to talk to you about a couple who has learned to work together. Not only have they worked together, living together, and raising children, but they do social work together. Can I hear an ashe for that? Because you guys know how hard it is to have a relationship. Don't you? Come on. Ain't nothing easy about that proposition. But when you can work on it and you can support the community, I tell you, you've got my admiration for good and for sure. Curtis and Verlin Davis take the phrase, I am my brother's keeper, literally. They constantly demonstrate this as individuals and as a married couple. They have always helped the lost, the forgotten, and those just needing a little comfort of assistance. Many men, women, and children have been touched by their lives. Curtis and Verlin will say, though it, that it, though it is they who have been touched, in their 70 plus years, 70 plus years. <laughs> President Bush would bomb people and say, shock and awe. That shocks and awes me, 70 whole years. So um, during the late 70s and 80s, if they didn't have a place to go and feed the homeless, they packed up their camper. They put food in it, they got volunteers to come, and they fed people who would not have a warm meal if it wasn't for them. That's amazing, y'all. It makes you feel like getting up early on Saturday morning instead of hitting the alarm clock and grabbing the pillow a little bit longer. Okay, and I would like to also let you know that they were with the Providence Feeding Program and they're committed to their church, which is the Providence Baptist Church in San Francisco Bayview District. I'm finished talking because I'm just overwhelmed. So y'all just let them come on up and give them a warm, warm welcome, please. I really don't know what to say, but to God be the glory for the things that he's done in our lives. Um, just to be nominated, uh, Doris Benson and the committee, we would like to say thank you. But it wasn't done for what we're standing here now for.
my husband and I have been married for 49 years and a half. <laughs> to God be the glory again. <laughs> But we have a sister and brother-in-law out there it's going on 64 years. So, and they have been our mentors all along. We have three children, six grandchildren, and we're just grateful. We have a lot of children throughout San Francisco that has come to live with us and to get themselves together. So just God is good. I want to thank the people who's responsible for this. Uh, it's such a blessing to, to have someone to honor you. When you, the work that you do that you're not anticipating, you, know, you just enjoy what you're doing and uh, God has chosen. See, it, that's the way it is. God works through people. And so happened, so happened, I was available to God, and God chose me for a ministry. But when God does that, when people see me, they should see God working in the lives of people. They should see the love of God being spirited, because God chose his people, ordinary people like you and me. Right. People who's willing to do as he command. So the question is that sometimes we have to ask ourselves, are we available to God? And see, God can use us. So it's just a wonderful blessing here. If I could sing, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I got a song that I sure would sing, but I'm not a singer, but I just give God all the praise. To God be the glory for the things he have done. God be the glory. So I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm tell you then, those are the, our mentors. That's what I want to be when I grow up. I got to believe in many lifetimes, because I don't know if I'm going to make it on this lifetime, but I shall sure try. You know what? Do you believe that it takes a village to raise a child? Yes. And do you love your children? Yes. But do sometimes, not, not all the time, but just sometimes, they, you, they make you a little irritated. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it a blessing to have somebody else love your child? Because yeah. it does take a village to raise, raise a child. But, so our next honoree is, has touched my life personally, and she has touched everybody. She don't touch your heart. She grabs it and she squeezes it. And you're not the same anymore because your heart is tighter and it beats a little bit better. Because everybody needs a heart that beats just a little bit better. What do you think, cousins? So um, our next honoree is Loretta McBride, but her students want to talk about her. So I'd like to introduce um, Troy Dangerfield and Shaquille, and they're going to talk about Miss McBride. Give them a hand. Uh, hello, my name is Troy Dangerfield. Um, uh, Miss McBride, wow. <laughs> She's a real remarkable woman. Uh, she changed my life and the lives of thousands of, of students. Um, when I first saw her, I didn't think there was anything really special about her. <laughs> In fact, I didn't really like her. <laughs> I mean, like, what, what kind of a teacher takes you to her house if you don't finish your math homework? Uh, and then, like, <laughs> In um, fourth grade, she told me, she, I didn't even have her as a teacher, and she told me, you know, you should play an instrument. I was like, okay, you know, that's cool. I'll play an instrument. The violin, like, what? I'm trying to be the cool kid, you know? And, and he was the violin. <laughs> and then she, so, so, 
I started it, you know, it was cool, but you know, I, I, I don't, don't want to play the violin. <laughs> and so like she, so I took up a different instrument, the viola. It's pretty much the same thing, but like it has a deeper sound, so I could be like, yeah, it's a guy instrument. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and so to this day, I'm still playing that instrument, and like, it's really, It's had a big effect on my life because, I mean, scholarships and, I mean, stuff is just coming my way that, like, I wouldn't be the man I am today or the young man I am today <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for Mr. Bride, so. Shaquille. Well, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be playing music at all. She made me play the bass. <laughs> If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't even be in high school right now. So she, everywhere we go, she always embarrassed me, but this is my time to embarrass her. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, thank you for all the help you've given us, and thank you just for being you, being the extra mother that you are. So without further ado, Mrs. McBride. Clap, 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 clap. I'm holding it first. I really thank the Lord for being here. And I don't say that, you know, with a cliche in mind, but I really thank the Lord Jesus Christ for the chance to pour into young people because that's the richest avenue, the richest resource that any of us have is our children. And Trent embarrassed me, so I'm going to embarrass him back. <laughs> you know, he was awarded a $21,000 scholarship to go to high school. <laughs> and I'm going to get Shaquille because he was awarded a scholarship to go to UC Berkeley to study with people in the symphony. <laughs> but, and they are so special. But you know what's really the, the, the defining point is that all of our children can be Trent's and Shaquille's. All, all we have to do is pour into them. And I didn't, I'm not a speech writer, and I love to lecture to children, as they can attest to, but if we all just take two children from our neighborhood that are failing in any area, and we just make it our business to make sure that they succeed in one area in such a way that it changes the lives of their family, our whole country will hear about our children. It is our, our prerogative and our responsibility to make a difference in the lives of our children. So I really thank you for the award. I really do. I thank Mrs. Dangerfield. She's just such a beautiful woman. And her family is full of awesome people. But so are ours. All of us have jewels in our families. And it's up to us to polish those jewels. And I also want to thank God for those from Fellowship Academy. So if you're from Fellowship, would you just wave? I see some faces out there. And I thank you for this wonderful award. Remember, our children are our future, and they're our present. So let's take two hands and just make sure they make it to the top. Thank you. So now I'd like to introduce Bayview Zone, praise and sign dancers from S.R. Martin College Preparatory School. Put your hands together for our young people. Ashe.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have your attention. We're going to begin our program. Thanks for bearing with us. We know we're starting a little late. We're waiting for um, all of our honorees to get here. So we will begin now. So good afternoon and welcome to the 15th annual Unsung Hero Awards. <laughs> My name is Linda Brooks Burton, and I am the branch manager at the Bayview Wadden branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful library, wonderful branch. And every year, the library likes to take the time to honor those individuals who go above and beyond the duty uh, to volunteer in their neighborhoods, whether in their own families, or at work, or their communities. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we would like to honor these heroes today. To begin our program, we have uh, a choir from Castlemont High School who's going to sing first for us, Lift Every Voice and Sing. They have their own rendition, so please listen. And then after they've sung their version, we'd like uh, everyone to stand and sing Lift Every Voice a second time. So if you would give a wonderful welcome to these young people, the Castleers from Castlemont High School. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Have your attention. We're going to begin our program. Thanks for bearing with us. We know we're starting a little late. We're waiting for um, all of our honorees to get here. So we will begin now. So good afternoon and welcome to the 15th annual Unsung Hero Awards. <laughs> My name is Linda Brooks Burton, and I am the branch manager at the Bayview Wadden branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful library, wonderful branch. And every year, the library likes to take the time to honor those individuals who go above and beyond the duty uh, to volunteer in their neighborhoods, whether in their own families, or at work, or their communities. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we would like to honor these heroes today. To begin our program, we have uh, a choir from Castlemont High School who's going to sing first for us, Lift Every Voice and Sing. They have their own rendition, so please listen. And then after they've sung their version, we'd like uh, everyone to stand and sing Lift Every Voice a second time. So if you would give a wonderful welcome to these young people, the Castleliers from Castlemont High School. Thank you. Good, af Good afternoon. Have your attention. We're going to begin our program. Thanks for bearing with us. We know we're starting a little late. We're waiting for um, all of our honorees to get here. So we will begin now. So good afternoon and welcome to the 15th annual Unsung Hero Awards. <laughs> My name is Linda Brooks Burton, and I am the branch manager at the Bayview Wadden branch of the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful library, wonderful branch. And every year, the library likes to take the time to honor those individuals who go above and beyond the duty uh, to volunteer in their neighborhoods, whether in their own families, or at work, or their communities. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we would like to honor these heroes today. To begin our program, we have uh, a choir from Castlemont High School who's going to sing first for us, Lift Every Voice and Sing. They have their own rendition, so please listen. And then after they've sung their version, we'd like uh, everyone to stand and sing Lift Every Voice a second time. So if you would give a wonderful welcome to these young people, the Castleliers from Castlemont High School. Thank you.
doesn't it give you the chills to see such talent? God bless you, young people. You guys were amazing. Oh, man. Can I hear Ashe Cousins? Y'all get a little quiet in, the, in, in this family reunion. Don't let me be the loudest one in the room, OK? Uh, Two-term mayor of San Francisco, our current mayor, Willie Brown, has been member of the California State Assembly from 1965 to 1996. Is that right? Six, ooh, that's a long time. <laughs> He's a member of CalPERS Governing Board for 2000, and as a member of the California State Assembly, he was the longest-serving speaker. The longest. Y'all didn't hear me, cousins. And only the fifth African American legislator in California history. Now, some of us have a little sign, you know, we sign our name. But our mayor, he has a signature, and he has signed his name in the history of San Francisco. And for that, Mr. We appreciate you. God bless you. Ashe Cousins. Uh, don't let them get lazy on you now. Here to further introduce our illustrious mayor is a community activist and winner of last year's Unsung Hero Award, Mrs. Doris Vincent. Good afternoon. I hope I don't take too much time and I hope I don't embarrass our mayor, but I believe that God orders our steps. And today this program have proved that what I'm about to do might be okay. We have a room full of young people. We have a man who's standing before us who came from humble beginnings. And he has soared. The number just before he's, his introduction shows what we can do. If we have a dream, we have a vision. The mayor doesn't know that I have all this stuff. I first got to know about Willie Brown in 1962. I was new to San Francisco and he was running. And there, uh, I had told Miss Burden that I had a wonderful picture of him from 1969. I went through all of my stuff. I could not find that picture. He looked like a teenager, but here he was running. We're in the main library, and most of you might be able to see this is meeting Willie Brown. Inauguration Day, January 8, 1996. What a City Can Be by Willie Brown. Inauguration Willie Brown, Jr., Mayor, January 8, 2000. This is one of the budgets from 1998, 1999. And if you read the budget, you will see that he did accomplish the things that he said he would do with Muni, recreation and parks, child care and children's program, substance abuse treatment services, homeless prevention and programs, welfare reform. He loves children. And the media has not done him fair because it's the little things that he's done that you've not heard about. Many times he was in Bayview Hunters Point for simple things like a bridge program. My granddaughter, Niasha, went to um, Charles Drew, and he was there for one of their programs. But this he doesn't know that I have because I have worked for him over the years, voted for him every time he ran, I've only done sweat equity. I didn't have money to do contributions. But I understand that his children put this together. I was given a copy and told not to tell anybody, so I'm telling now. <laughs> if you don't mind, I think if the mayor will allow me to, I want to read from his own words just a little bit about who he was and what he has accomplished. Early years, I was born and raised in a colored section. Most of you young people don't know what that is. In a colored section. We were not always allowed to live where we wanted to live. In the colored section, 
how pe um, in the colored section of Mineola, Texas, is a little way station on the road out of Dallas. And colored is how people like me were referred to in polite conversation during the era of strict Southern segregation known as Jim Crow. My family was by no means well-to-do, and my father did not stick around for very long. So I was not, however, without advantages. And the reason I wanted to read this, there's a young man in our, man in our audience today who needs to hear this, because his father has not been there for him. I was fortunate to be surrounded by incredible strong women. My mother, who worked as a maid to support us, and my grandmother, with whom my brother, sister, and I all lived. I also benefit from a caring and protective community, grown close and nearly self-sufficient in the face of ostracisms from the rest of society. And family and community made all the difference in those early years. They believed in me, taught me the values of hard work, the importance of education, and nurtured my sense of dignity and self-worth. San Francisco bound. As I grew to an adult, I worked very hard to demonstrate that my family's faith in me had not been misplaced. I worked at every odd job I could get, from picking blackberries to shining shoes. I did well in my studies and graduated second in my class in 1951 from Mineola colored high school. We were not allowed to go to what was considered the white school. But the place of my birth was a hostile environment for black folks who were not content to remain in the narrowly confined places assigned to them. And so right after graduation, I convinced my family to let me move to San Francisco and live with my aunt an uncle who had settled here some years before. I promised my mother that if she let me go, I would go to college, work hard, and make her proud of me. It is a promise I have struggled to keep in a daily basis. And I could go on. You will be able to find this, I believe, on the fourth floor in this library. But what I would also like to say, if you travel the United States, Everyone knows Willie Lewis Brown. Willie Lewis Brown has done more for the state of California than any other in individual. Willie Lewis Brown has done more for Bayview Hunters Point and for the city of San Francisco than any other mayor. So with that having been said, with deep respect and honor, the Honorable Willie Lewis Brown, Jr. Thank you. Where'd you get all that stuff? <laughs> I had it for years. Stay long enough. All right. All right. Thank you very much for that very, very kind introduction. Did you imagine Sophie? She was reading my own words back to me, and they sounded pretty good. <laughs> I believe that I can fly. I really, really do. And I think that even before they wrote that song, I believed that I could fly. And I believe that I could fly because. My mother and my grandmother made me believe that. They had me believing that I was an astronaut before I knew that there was, <laughs> that there could be an astronaut. They had me believing that anything that I imagined, I could do. And I set that as the stage for the development in my life. When I was told about the Unsung Hero Awards today, uh, I wanted to come by 
not because of any acknowledgement of me, because I think it's far more important for people who are seldom, if ever, acknowledged, seldom, if ever, in the limelight, but do so much to make life better for other people. And I am just delighted uh, that San Francisco and the African American community has that reputation, has that concept, and executes upon that concept. Um, I was out earlier at, uh, at the library, at, out at the Excelsior. They are redoing many of the libraries in San Francisco. And you would uh, think that um, we would not be necessarily present at something like libraries. But there we were, seated, ready to talk, ready to listen, and ready to do the things that need to be done to make that community a good one. I remember the first new branch of any a library that I had an occasion to cut the ribbon off as mayor of the city was out on Randolph Avenue, Ocean View. And that you wouldn't think, people don't think about libraries in our community. Well, I gotta tell you, there was no library in Mineola, none at all. But there are libraries here, and believe me, the library on Third Street is used just as the library in Chinatown is used. The library on Ocean Avenue is used just as the library on Sacramento Street uh, is used. And my emphasis has been on reestablishing and making a permanent home for many of those libraries. I was told that when I was mayor that some of the branches of the library were in rental space. And you know what rental space means. At some point, somebody can take it away from you. Well, you the voters followed my leadership. We put together a bond program, and now we, we will own all of the libraries. And those are the libraries in our community that we need to own. And let me tell you, the one on Third Street, one of the things that I've been doing over the last uh, two or three months is putting together a program that's gonna allow us to build a town center in the Hunters Point Bayview area. That town center is gonna have the cultural component. We actually, since Opera House needs a new foundation, we're we gonna build a new foundation and then put the, put the Opera House on wheels and roll it a few feet up to set it on the new foundation. So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years from now, the, any kind of a quake, the Opera House will survive like the Opera House is going to survive downtown, seismically upgrading it in the same way. And at the same time, we're going to do the rest of it with the community's blessings, with the community's input. We're going to make it a whole town center. And part of that town center is going to be a brand new library with all of the state-of-the-art equipment, much larger, and with all the community rooms components, including, including sound rooms. We love sound rooms. We love to participate in sound rooms. And clearly, for recording purposes, we need them. Well, those are the things that I dream about. Those are the things that uh, I think we can fly together uh, and produce, and I am really pleased that you've allowed me to be your mayor uh, for uh, so many years. And I know this is not political, but I guess I should upfront tell you that I'm supporting Gavin Newsom for mayor of San Francisco, and I won't make any bones about it, the whole business of making sure we continue to fly and continue to soar says that as a political leader, I'll let you know what I'm doing. I'm supporting Gavin Newsom for mayor, and I'm supporting Kamala Harris for district attorney of San Francisco. <laughs> And believe me, these two young people win, the process will continue. The process will continue and move in the direction that it needs to move uh, for all of us. I thank you for allowing me to interrupt the program. I thank the young people for rendering that song. I believe that I can fly. That's my theme, that's my life, that's my goal, and that ought to be all of your themes, your lives, and your goals. Thank you. Here's your award, um, Mayor Willie Brown. We're proud of you and we love you.
Cousins, did I tell you how much I appreciate you lately? You are absolutely phenomenal. Can you give yourself a hand? We are going to continue the momentum. We're going to skip the 10 minute inter intermission. And um, because we're going to skip the 10 minute intermission, I promise you we're going to feed you afterwards some really wonderful food. We're going to have a gr gastronomical treat, you guys. So let's say hashe. So no 10 minute break. Don't go nowhere. Because we have a, an award that just touches my heart. We have Anola Maxwell. Can I get a hand for Anola Maxwell? She fought in some of San Francisco's most important progressive campaigns, from the battle of district elections to the struggle to limit office growth in San Francisco. And she will be remembered as a tireless leader and a passionate community activist. Anola Maxwell devoted most of her time providing improving the lives of the neighborhood children. A fixture of the Potrero Here community, Maxwell is best known for founding the Potrero Here Neighborhood House. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together. She also served on the neighborhood of the Bayview Hunters Point. Um, she, in recent remarks by our um, fabulous mayor, Willie L. Brown, who, who appointed her to the commission in 2000, he honored Ms. Maxwell as a pioneering spirit in the, center, in the city's African American community. Not only was she a fabulous community leader, but she had a most wonderful daughter. She, her youngest child is supervisor Sophie Maxwell. Okay, cuz it's time to get excited. It is time to get excited. Ms. Ms. Sophie Maxwell has also given every single one of our awardees tonight a proclamation, and we thank you from the bottom of our heart for that. So um, unfortunately, Enola Maxwell um, is no longer physically on this planet, but her spirit soars so high, and the legacy she left behind is a tribute to every single one of us. And we're clapping to heaven, you guys. Clap on up to heaven. Please, Sophie, come up and accept the award for your mom. Give her a warm welcome, y'all. Thank you all so much. Awards do a lot. I've accepted, this is the second award my mother has gotten this week. And so I'm thinking, these people are trying to tell me something. You know, because every time I get an award for her, it makes me understand and realize how important commitment is and integrity is and caring for people. And when you do, it goes far beyond your life here on earth. It goes beyond. And so it makes me have to do the same thing. She's putting a lot on me. I'm telling you guys are putting a lot on me. But I, it's no more than I can bear and no more than I should. So I want to thank you so much for these awards. And it really helps me make the tough decisions that I have to make. It makes me think and ask the most important question. And that is, how does it affect people? And in every decision I make, that's what I have to ask myself. How does it affect people? And I keep my mother on my board, and so she's always telling me something. She's always telling me something. So again, I want to thank you for this award. And for all of those people who get awards, remember, they go a long, long way. They touch everybody that's in this audience, because people are thinking, I will get an award one day. So again, thank you, and congratulations to all of you. So now we have a special treat. Um, Charles Shaw is a native of Houston, Texas. He's com he has completed both national and international in speech and debate compositions, as well as coach and mentored youths on the importance of effective communication. He's currently working towards his PhD in organizational psychology. Cool. At the California School of Organizational Studies at the Alliance International University. So if you could please welcome Mr. Shaw. Come on down, it's your turn. Let me just first say that I am extremely happy to be here and that I love 
black folks. Some say that our history began in the middle of an ocean, in the belly of a monster, at the mercy of demons. Others say that it began with a hammer and a nail and that we laid our bodies down and raised cities along our spines. But I say that it goes deeper than that, deeper than the cotton fields and the human cargoes and the thick and heavy links of a history that we are constantly trying to replace to desire, the urge that stirs you in the middle of the night, grabs you by the spine and jerks your head upright. It is at this moment of unrest that we realize what we must do, which is to gather ourselves up and move. 100 years later, from the souls of black folk, a forethought by W.E.B. Du Bois. Herein lie buried many things which, if read with patience, may show the strange meaning of being black here in the dawning of the 20th century. This meaning is not without interest to you, gentle reader, for the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. I pray you then receive my little book in all charity, studying my words with me, forgiving mistake and foible for sake of the faith and passion that is in me, and seeking the grain of truth that is hidden there. I have sought here to sketch in vague, uncertain outline the spiritual world in which 10,000 Americans live and strive. First, in two chapters, I have tried to show what emancipation meant to them and what was its aftermath. In a third chapter, I have pointed out the slow rise of personal leadership and criticized candidly the leader who hears the chief burden of his race today. Then, in two other chapters, I have sketched in swift outline the two worlds within and without the veil, and thus have come to the central problem of training men for life. Venturing now into deeper detail, I have in two chapters studied the struggles of the massed millions of the black peasantry, and in another have sought to make clear the present relations of the sons of master and man. Leaving then the world of the white man, I have stepped within the veil, raising in that you may view faintly its deeper recesses, the meaning of its religion, the passion of its human sorrow, and the struggle of its greater souls. All this I have ended with a tale twice told, but seldom written. Some of these thoughts of mine have seen the light before in other guys, for kindly consenting to their republication here in altered and extended form, I must thank the publishers of the Atlantic Monthly, The World's Work, The Dial, The New World, and the Annals of American Academy of Political and Social Science. Before each chapter is now printed stands a bar of the sorrow songs. Some echo the haunting melody for only the American music which welled up from black souls in the dark and past. And finally, need I add that I who speak here am bone of the bone and flesh of the flesh of them that live within the veil. And the final selection comes to you from Dudley Randall, a hypothetical conversation between W.E.B. and Booker T. It seems to me, said Booker T, uh, it shows a mighty lot of cheek to study chemistry and Greek when Mr. Charlie needs a hand to hold the cotton on his land. Why stick your nose inside a book? I don't agree, said W.E.B. If I should have the drive to seek knowledge of chemistry and Greek, I'll do it. Charles and Miss can look another place for hand to cook. Some men rejoice in skill of hand and some in cultivating land, and there are others who maintain the right to cultivate the brain. It seems to me, said Booker T., 
that all you folks have missed the boat. Who shout about the right to vote and spend vain days and sleepless nights in uproar over civil rights? Just keep your mouth shut and do not grouse, but, but work and, and save and, and buy a house. I don't agree, said W.E.B. For what can property avail of dignity and justice fail? Unless you help to make the laws, they'll steal your house with trumped up claws. A rope's as tight, a fire's as hot, no matter how much cash you've got. Speak soft and try your little plan. But as for me, I'll be a man. It seems to me, said Booker T, I don't agree, said W.E.B. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. You know what? I'm going to send his mother a Mother's Day card because she did a good job on that boy. This is for your mother. God bless her, wherever she is. I tell you, when you think about having a little boy child, that's what you want to come out. <laughs> Although we're happy with what we get, ain't we? Um, and then I wanted, to, I wanted to quote a little bit from the prophet. And then there are those who have little to give and give it all. These are the believers in life and the bounty of life, and their coffers is never empty. There are those who give with joy, and the joy is their reward. And there are those who give with pain, and that pain is their baptism. And there are those who give and know not pain in giving, nor do they seek joy, nor give with mindful of virtue. They give as in yonder valley the myrtle breath is fragrant into space. It is well to ask, to give when asked, but it's better to give unasked through understanding. And to the open hand, the search for one who shall receive is joy greater than giving. You guys know who I'm talking about, Miss Gloria Jackson. I ain't finished talking about Miss Jackson yet. I'm not finished with you yet, Miss Jackson. She's been a resident of All Hollows Community, a senior apartment building for 17 years. Now, if you lived in this building, you wouldn't have to ask who Miss Jackson was. Because when your head hurt and you could not get out of that bed, she would be right there with a big old cup of soup and a nice warm hand and some great cheerful thoughts. When they're hospitalized and you don't have no more family, guess who you get to see? you get to see Miss Jackson, because she's there at the hospital with a few flowers and her warm, effervescent smile. Just like the effervescent bubble always rising to the top. That's you, Miss Jackson. Before I get too much sillier, you come on up here and get your award. Come on. Don't she look beautiful? Ashe Cousins? All right, dear. God bless you and thank you so very much. Okay. I thank for the wall where y'all gave me and I let all my friends here today. As I glad Sister Grace told me about that. And I allowed to cook, I allowed to make soup. I allowed to visit people in the hospital. And I allowed to do that, but a long time ago, I used to babysit. And I can't babysit now, I'm down in my back. <laughs> and sometimes I go to my granddaughter house and spend a night, and she told me, tell me to keep the baby until she get back. And I said, hurry back. That baby get on my nerve. <laughs> And I said, long time ago, I used to keep you. 
I say I'm too old now, baby sick. <laughs> and I want to say thanks, Sister Grace, to tell me about that. Okay, thank you all too. <laughs> Doesn't it give you hope for the future to see all these seniors as leaders? So don't get lazy on me, cousin, because I don't care how old you are. You can still contribute to your community. The present tense cannot be spoken fluently unless we first speak honestly about the past. For the, for the past three years, Mrs. Dolores Gaines McGee has been a member of the coordinating committee of the James Byrd Racism Oral History Project. James Byrd was dragged through the streets of Jasper, Texas by three white supremacists five years ago in response to this horrific, horrific hate crime. A group of San Franciscans started interviewing people about racism in America. And as of today, the project has gathered 1,000 oral histories. Can I get an ashe for that? <laughs> the, oral, the oral history project was a response to the Jasper tragedy in a way to memorialize Mr. Bird. She has been a scout for seven years. Wow. She's been an assistant scout master of PAC 123. Um, she served on the OMI Ocean View Merced and Ingleside community as a board member. Um, she, um, she worked in Vicksburgs. Um, she, she put herself in harm's way. Because, you know, sometimes when you do something that is right, the community will not affirm it. Because there's always fear hidden in there. Fear of what it'll do to them and fear of what it'll do to other people. But we have a um, heroine here because she didn't let fear stop her, not any, not whatsoever. So please welcome Mrs. McGee, a longtime member of the National Council of Negro Women's Golden Gate Section. Please, a fabulous, fabulous person. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. It's an honor for me to be here today along with the other awardees. It's a long, long road getting here. When I was a teenager, my mother, I learned how to do all of these things from my mother. My mother was an activist in the community. She worked in the school. She worked in the church. Well, I decided that this was something that I didn't want to do, and as a teenager, I voiced my opinion, which was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Every project my mother had after that, I had to participate. <laughs> when I came to San Francisco, I grew up in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I went to a segregated school. So when they talk about Mayor Brown being in a segregated school, I know exactly what he mean by that in some respect. But to me, learning, regardless to what environment you're in, reading, writing, respect for teachers, is the same in any school. And that's what we were taught. We were taught that we are not supposed to bow to anyone. I learned that at 16 when a professor from Alcorn University came in to speak to the class before me, and I had to usher at that graduation. And her speech was, we are not to bow our heads, our backs to anyone. And from that moment on, I was total terror. <laughs> I uh, came to San Francisco, and when my children were born, I made sure that I became very much involved in their school. My uh, kids went to Jose Ortega. I was uh, president of PTA, working with Jacqueline Scott, who is present here today, the first family, and Mrs. Uh, Mildred Scott, 
They are the first family I met when I came to San Francisco. They're here to see me get this award. Uh, I went on to work with uh, the Scouts, which is a good organization, and more people should uh, enroll their children because what it does is build character. And usually when I was in my uniform, the first thing guys would come up and say to me, oh, you're one of those den mothers. I would always point to my sleeve. I am an assistant scout master, and underneath it said trained. <laughs> After that, they didn't want to talk to me. But as long as I was a den mother, everything was fine. I uh, wanted to thank the scouts because they sent me for my training at Presidio Army Base. I got further training at Contra Costa College, and little did I know that when I would go to the classrooms, we were in a seminar all day long, when I got there, there were no women. I was the only female, and they would all say, we have been waiting for you. So that was an experience for me. Dealing with the National Council of Negro Women, I joined that organization because uh, two sisters from my hometown were members of the Golden Gate section. They kept inviting me to come and join the organization. You need to come and join the organization. Oh, I said, oh, I get around to it. But when I was a kid, my mother would always uh, show me pictures in the Jet magazine of Dr. Dorothy Height and the National Council of Negro Women. And when I got a chance to join the organization, I did it because my mother was so interested in that organization. And I would like to thank that organization for allowing me to be their second vice president, their first vice president, and and I would like to thank them for allowing me to work as their project coordinator with the AIDS Foundation in July. We uh, marched, uh, walked in that AIDS walk in San Francisco, and we were among the tenth. Uh, nonprofit organizations as far as funds were concerned. So we got a, a recognition award from, certificate from uh, the AIDS Foundation. <laughs> when uh, Mayor Brown was uh, speaking about the OMI uh, library, we had an incident. I was, I'm getting up in age, as you can see by my gray hair. And so I was thinking that maybe now I don't have to do as much work. I wanted to go and do a few other things. So I had cleared my slate to work on some other projects. And we had just gotten the uh, library built. And a person wanted to open up a delicatessen at first. And then he said he couldn't make any money unless he had a liquor license. And the delicatessen is on the same block. It's only one building between the delicate, where he wanted to open the delicatessen and the library. When I uh, came home from work, there was a message on my answer machine. Why is it that you weren't at the meeting? What meeting? And then they went on to tell me what was happening. The next day I came home, there were, uh, they had left something in my mailbox. So what I had to do then, stop what I was doing, write a letter to our supervisor the supervisor, uh, once they received the letter, they called me back and I told them that we had fought very hard for that library. The library is very necessary in any community simply because we have elementary schools there, we have child care center, we have after day programs in the neighborhood. So I told the supervisor's representative, it will not happen. Also, I ended up calling the Alcohol, Beverage, and Control, and he said, I know what you're calling me about. I said, yes, and it will not happen. The uh, supervisor's office uh, got back to me, and they said, well, we wanted you to know that uh, whatever is going on, it won't happen on your street, because we have gotten an overwhelming response from the community, and they do not want that. And I told her, I said, well, when something like this happened, we should be notified. I said. We were not notified, and they said that they had a few people from the neighborhood who came to the meeting, and they didn't want all of us 
to come down on the guy who was trying to open it. I said, oh, we weren't planning to come down on him. We were on our way to your office. <laughs> so the, oh, she said, oh, no, you don't have to do that. But I'm saying that to say this. Whenever you are a community worker, you are a servant of that community, and servants don't get paid. We have long hours, and the only thing about uh, this type of work is that you have to love doing it. My, uh, you never know where community service work will take you. My work with the Janesboro Junior Foundation, I have gained a lot of friends. Come December, Dr. Juan Fetter will be coming from Southeast Asia, which is in East Timor. He lives in East Timor. He'll be coming from Southeast Asia area to meet with the Janesbury Junior Foundation. And when you're doing this type of work, you never think you're going to meet certain people, and especially when someone comes from halfway around the world to meet you. I would like to thank all of you for being here. I would like to thank the person who nominated me for this award. I'd like to thank my family members who are in the audience, all of my friends, and all of my neighbors. Also, uh, for young people, since we have so many young people here, you sh should really think about getting into community service. It is something that is very fulfilling. It's the satisfaction that you get from helping other people. Because I didn't get here by myself. I got here on the backs of my parents. I got here by the shoulders of my grandparents and the other ancestors before them. I got here on the head of all of my educators. I got here on the heart of all the people who love me and I got here by the hands of those who reached to pull me along with them. So I'd like to thank you for this award, and may God bless all of you. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> to the Lois, on the behalf of the Golden Gate section, your sisters in love, your sisterhood, we want you to take these flowers and let them glow. Thank you. As beautiful as you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to take a few minutes to recognize um, the two, um, the only two black um, schools in San Francisco. We have um, Elizabeth, is that Holcomb? Could you stand up? And Ms. McBride, can you stand up one more time, please? Now these two are, there's, there's only a couple of black schools in San Francisco. They're way underfunded and they're way under-resourced, but we have the greatest people in the world there. Cousins, wake up and give them some ashes. You guys do fabulous, fabulous work, almost single-handedly. There are some private schools where they have circles of people that give $15,000, one person. But these, these schools don't get any resources at all. And we're asking of the community that when there is something in your community that's rising up, bringing up people just like you to support them. And on that note, Fellowship Sunday for the Black Nativity is coming up on Sunday, December 14, 2003 at 4 p.m. And cousins, we're going to have another family reunion there. So I want to see all your faces. Otherwise, I'm coming over. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to come over because I don't leave. Talk, 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 talk. Our last, our very last, distinguished, absolutely phenomenal, beautiful, gorgeous, outstanding, Helen Habersham. Helen, I'm going to talk about you now. Uh, Maya Angelou say, says that giving liberates the soul of the giver. The giver is as enriched as the recipient and more important, that intangible but very real psychic force of good in the world increase. Ms. Havishan, you increase the good of the world, and we want to recognize you today. She's been involved in setting up the Elder Abuse Victim Service Program in Hunters Point. 
She's a member of the San Francisco Organ Organizing Project Agenda Committee for Affordable Housing, Education, and Healthcare. Because if you live in San Francisco, there is no affordable housing. Can I hear an ashe? ashe. She organized a food bank at the Milton Myers in Hunters Point. She volunteers. She's active with the um, Bethel AME Church of San Francisco. She's got a senior ministry pro program. Where do you sleep? <laughs> and do you babysit? Oh, we'll talk about that later. I, um, um, one of the, her nominees said that she personally feels Ms. Habersham is an inspiration for young people and seniors alike. She's never known her to say no. If asked to be an active participant in a project, she is going to be there live and in color, fabulous, beautiful, and excellent. You go, Miss Habersham. You come on up here and get your award. All right, come on, cousins, don't fall asleep now. Woohoo! Resplendent in her hat, look at that. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> this had been a wonderful afternoon. I was waiting for the 10 minutes um, intermission, and I was thinking I was going to grab my group and go out the back door. <laughs> After I got here, I couldn't figure out why I'm here. I've heard so many wonderful things said, so many wonderful things are going on, and I love you guys. On October, October the 21st, I had a chance to do the dance, and I did my dance. So that's why I was ready to get up and join you. <laughs> but I could not remember why I was here. I felt like I should have been someplace else. And, but I am grateful that I came. I didn't know you had all this information. On the way from, uh, on the way down here today, the director of music says, what do you do? And I was trying to explain it to him. I was thinking, oh, I didn't know I was doing all that. But I'm just grateful that I can do it. There's a whole lot of 76 year old ladies who can't. So I just, I'm just grateful that I can, and thank you very much. Ashe, Ashe, Ms. Habersham, Ashe, Ashe. You know, I know that Renee Coleman is here. She's a past winner of the Unsung Heroes. Uh, Renee, can uh, you stand up? <gasps> oh! Oh, wonderful. Wow. Congratulations. Speaking of past awardees, do we have any other ones in the in the building? Okay, I see one right there. Oh, I see Ms. Vincent. And your, your name, sir? Mr. Ma oh, Ms. I remember. Hey, Mr. Maxwell. And Alma. How you doing, Alma? So glad to see you again. Okay, well, we have um, another very special treat. We're going um, to have the Castle Mountain. The choir sing for us. You guys are phenomenal. Did you know that? You make me proud to be alive. You guys are phenomenal. I know I'm going to see you all on Star Search if that's where you want to go. Go, okay? I'll be there. Um, and I also wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank you for your presence today because without each and every single one of you, it wouldn't have been as wonderful as it has been. So can you give yourself a hand? 
and give yourself a hug too, because I won't be able to get to all of you. Go ahead, hug yourself. And I also wanted to take my, uh, an opportunity um, to, to say my little goodbyes right now because um, you, you guys, don't, many, many of you know me, my name is Veronica Dangerfield. I've done stand-up comic before, but you probably don't know that by now. <laughs> I, um, I, I have a unique experience because um, I was raised in Tokyo, Japan. See, I'm my, I'm my own race, I'm black and ease. I was initiated from um, Tokyo, Japan to Mount Pleasant, Texas. And boy, did I have a language problem. Nobody in Texas spoke English. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Nobody in Texas spoke English. But anyway, on a more serious note, <sighs> I, I'm, I am going to be having a show coming up in 2004. Since I gave up my, um, um, my um, reproduction queen, I was um, reproduction um, master 2001 and 2000, and can't have no more children unless they get an old folks home in the nursery. They don't typically mix those two. But anyway, I'm going to have a show coming out, and it's going to be really fun, and it's going to be really light, and it's going to be extremely silly, and I'd love to have you all there. So just look for it in the newspaper. Or you can look at me walking down Third Street talking about my show. <laughs> Probably be more of the second than the first. So um, I'm going to read you um, a little poem from Daisy Wag. It says, um, to an English friend in Africa, to be grateful for the freedom to see others dream. Bless your loneliness as much as you drank of your former companionships. All that you experience now will become moods of future joy. So bless it all. Do not think your way superior to another. Do not venture to judge, but see things with fresh and open eyes. Do not condemn, but praise when you can. And when you can't, be silent. I say praise when you can and lift up. Everybody lift your hands up. I'm lifting you up, cousins, every single one of you. Boy, are my arms tired. Time now is a gift for you, a gift of freedom to think and remember and understand the ever perplexing past and to, re to recreate yourself anew in order to transfer time. Live while you're alive. Learn the ways of silence and wisdom. Learn to act, learn a new speech. Learn to be what you are, the seeds of your spirit. Learn to be free yourself from all things. Remember that all things would happen to you are raw materials, endlessly fertile. Castlemont, come on up. I love you, I love you, I love you. Have a great time. Thank you so much for coming. See you next year. Cousins, come on. Oh, oh.
Thank you, Castellers. That was wonderful. Let's give them a, another hand. They were beautiful. It's nice to see young people doing the tradition of, of our music. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. I'd like to, in closing, take a few seconds to just thank uh, the adults, some of the adults in these young people's lives who have taken their time to teach and school our young ones. And so, Ms. Valley Towns, would you come up and just accept a rose from us? Thank you very much. She is the director of the Castellers. And Ms. Libby Holcomb, who has done such a wonderful job with the Praise and Sign Dancer from S.R. Martin. I'd also like to give a rose to our, our veteran MC, Ms. Veronica Dangerfield, for a wonderful job. And I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of the people who have helped in putting this program together. I hope you've had a wonderful time. Is this the first time for many of you ever been here before? Well, I hope that you will come every year. This is our 15th annual one. This was a program that began at the Western Edition branch 15 years ago. And about five years ago, we brought it out to the main so that everybody could enjoy it. So thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank my fellow librarians who helped put together this program, Chinetta Jackson, Loretta Dowell, and Stuart Shaw. I also like to thank Ms. Miriam Pavis and our selection committee who helped select this year's um, uh, winners, candidates. And she's sitting in the back, that's the lady at the guest book. I'd like to thank uh, Marcel, who's been taking pictures around here. Thank you so much, Marcel, for coming and doing that. And I'd like to thank our AV department, which consists of Joan in the back there and Eric on the side, who've been uh, videotaping our performance. And hopefully in a couple months, you'll be seeing this on Channel 26. It'll be on television, so look for that, OK? So, and last but not least, I'd like to thank the National Council of Negro Women who have put together a wonderful reception for you as you leave. So please go by and fill yourselves up with wonderful food. And again, thank you so much for coming out. And we've enjoyed it. Bye-bye.